The Wrestling Mayhem Show. Since 2006, the pioneer in pro wrestling podcasting. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network for your independent wrestling entertainment. Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 931, Tuesdays. We've been talking about pro- professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron, here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. We have a, hey, we're back to our regular time. That's right. We had Title Tuesday or whatever the hell last week that was going on with NXT and AEW. I'll watch NXT later. Don't worry about it. I think we're back to normal here. Um, let us know in the chat room what's going on out there, of course. Actually, I see them already talking about some talent that they wish didn't come back. Uh, oh. And they're in the Facebook chat. <laughs> so there's that. But we do have with us, first of all, my trusty wrestle buddy, The Riz. He's still wearing the hat. He is still wearing the hat. He's still wearing the hat. Is he still in timeout? He's still in timeout. Still in timeout. Fuck that guy. Well, I need to fix your 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 thing. Still has a Windows thing on it, so I need to fix that. There you go. That'll go away. There you go. We got. There you go. Uh, Yeah, he's he's in he's in timeout. You're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. He's on the other side. I know. I I know. I know. (laughs) We're we're not mentioning him. No, we're not. <laughs> this is great for the audio people. So yeah, we also have returning from the Grit and Glitter podcast. Emily Fear is back with us. Yeah, hi. I'm, I'm pausing because I almost wrote that the wrong way on a tweet the other day. <laughs> I'm like, nope, that's not the name. <laughs> so welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like uh, last time I was here was what like pre media weekend or po- just immediately post media weekend. Oh, you were here over the summer for sure, right? No, so. what? So. We'll have to check the notes. We'll have to check the notes. Um, they're definitely not here often enough. So <laughs> yeah, Consider- considering how close I am, I'm like, yeah, I could be here like most weeks. Yeah, it's like how's your Tuesday? You know, this is just like this is really just I- I'm in that comfort zone. We're like, I just want to bring back people that I know. I- like you're coming this week, Joe Dabrowski's coming next week. You know, it's just like yeah. this. This is the buddy cast at this point. I feel like that. Like we do that with our show too. Mm-hmm. Um, and my co-host is always really good about like fixing it up and making sure that we have like, you know, interviews that people want to hear and like interesting segments. And I'm Listen. just like, ah, you know, we got these people that we like. Can we yeah. just bring them on? It's easy. Well, so, what is the mission of the podcast? Is it to to do the things to get out to a bigger audience or introduce people that you think are cool to an audience that you hope will also think they're cool? I guess you right? kind of want to like, do both, and yeah, ultimately, yeah. like say both. Yeah, like yeah. if you have like your team, and then like one of your correspondents who's like regularly involved, also be a part of bringing in like guests for mm-hmm. interviews. That's like the best of both worlds, right? Yeah. But yeah. there's just so much to coordinate. <laughs> and some weeks, I just want to BS with my friends. Right. It's like, I just want to have a nice wrestle chat. You yeah. know, that's, yeah. that's fine. I don't want to like schedule. You know, some people are just so hard to schedule interviews with. Mm-hmm. Like, it's so difficult to pin them down. Mm-hmm. And uh, so. I am surprised that what we're doing an offshoot here at the beginning. I am surprised how many are afraid to do podcasts in the wrestling world. So many. Yeah. yeah. And um, I'm a little surprised by how many of them, and this is not a read on anyone in particular, but like, I just assume that if you are somebody who has to do a lot of traveling or do mm-hmm. a lot of coordinating for like various like, you know, gigs that you've got, you you might have a better understanding of what your calendar looks like, or keep a calendar. No, that's and a it, problem. That's and, an ongoing problem with a lot of people. <laughs> and it's like if I could tell wrestling training schools to like offer one augmentary course, it would be time management mm-hmm. and scheduling for wrestlers <laughs> there should be like people skills you know it's like in high school when you got like a check balancing class i didn't uh they rolled that out by then <laughs> um but like like there should be just like like life skills included in wrestling training right absolutely i mean i always think that at this point in this day and age uh wrestlers should be trained in a couple of things that they weren't normally or weren't traditionally trained in including like social media management mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, you know Either don't use it mm-hmm. if you can't do it responsibly or how to use it so that you don't like, yeah. you know, blow up your own career by being an asshole of the internet. Yeah. Um, and, like, guy. and basically like how to schedule. <laughs> you're pointing, like you're pointing at the guy here. in timeout. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah this guy well, you know, 
I guess you can do whatever you want if you've been on Sports Illustrated in the 80s. Uh, anyway, so mm. no, yeah, I'm with. Is I, that the law? It, it, yeah. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that is that the is that the bar that we have to cross? Is that, like, that's our statute of limitations, I guess. Yeah. You know, maybe I don't know exactly what year were you on Sports Illustrated? Okay, you're. You, all, right, all right you you fly you fly yeah, it was yeah. a different time i get it <laughs> so th- that probably would have been printed in sports illustrated in that age uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry i was just watching a video with kevin smith talking about how uh, chasing amy doesn't hold up quite as much as you think it would you know from the 90s because we talked different back then uh so yeah anyways um Let's talk about wrestling then. <laughs> I've got a lot to talk about. Of course, everybody here in some way, shape, or form was at Enjoy Wrestling this past weekend down in the south side of uh, Pittsburgh. We'll talk about that. Um, we have the PWI Women's 250 list in front of me right now. So we're, I understand. I know I saw a couple friends of the show. Were it's a part some of, of them in there. It's I saw not some all of them. conversation with you guys on the community chat and everything. Yeah. So I'm very interested to see uh, what, how this conversation goes. And, um, and uh, you know, whatever else has happened. I had a note somewhere for later in the show we'll get to it i don't know what it was that's okay i'll figure out at the break anyways there was a wrestle dream this past weekend this is the second one i love that the wrestle dream is just <laughs> listen when you do wrestle dream and they have the led board they're just this running waterfall the entire time like i love it's the only wrestling show with a with a a, a standard water feature through the entire thing so that's that's my <laughs> so dreaming happening in the pacific northwest northwest in the middle of the woods is apparently the theme of this show in Tacoma, Washington. Now, I have not been to but Tacoma, Washington. I've oh, been I to have. See, you have? Is that pretty much on brand for Tacoma, Washington? That, that's a look that came with that. Comment. I'm the wrong person to ask because I have bad feelings about Seattle and Tacoma, Washington <laughs> oh, based no. on a very th- specific person. Oh, no. Uh, so, and they are from Tacoma, Washington. Nick Wayne. So, like, that whole Brian area. Brian Danielson. Of, that whole, yes. <laughs> That whole area of the country could sink into the ocean. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, jeez. Don't do that. We have a Tina's out there. She's in the chat right now. Yeah, Tina, <laughs> Tina get, get, out of, get out of town. Move, You're yes. saying emotionally it can fall into the ocean, not physically. I'm saying that that area sucks butts. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, Tacoma is, it is very beautiful. That's one of the yes. reasons why they're all such jerks, because it's so beautiful <laughs> out there. Look. We have mountains and trees exactly. after you. They're like, look, we you can see the ocean and the mountains at the same time. Oh, <laughs> we're so cool. Our coffee costs $17. <laughs> wow. I'm definitely pulling this clip. We're getting the heat on this clip later. Uh, so, actually, you're getting it in the chat room right now. Uh-huh. <laughs> Tina says, I thought we were friends. <laughs> Tina, it's not about you. We are friends. You are you are probably the best thing about the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Yes. You you are too good for them. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> she is from Ohio, so. Uh, you're too good for Ohio, too. Well, yeah, yeah that's, that's, right. that's also very true. Well, let's, yeah. get you, let's get you a better place. <laughs> let's get, we can find you a place. <laughs> Pittsburgh's very nice. We're very nice in Pittsburgh. <laughs> anyway, so, so we did have the wrestling dream. Um, we did have, um, you know, kind of, I was talking before the show about, I didn't feel okay about being at a wrestling show until I saw uh, the Will Ospreay trick match. <laughs> Uh, emotionally uh, that night for some reason. And then we got a three-way with uh, with the cash on top of things, mm. So, which made it even more incredible. And, of course, um, and I don't know I'm fuzzy from the weekend, but uh, I believe Takesh is a new champ, right? Yes. So um, good story, great match, a lot of fun. I love throwing Takesh into that. You know, I mean, we've seen Ricochet and Osprey. We literally saw it two weeks ago. And, um, you know, I, that, I thought that was a nice add-on for something like that. Yeah, I'm glad that they. I'm glad that they actually went all the way with it because I, I was dubious of whether or not they would actually like pull the trigger and get it, get him a belt, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. and take it off of Osprey of all guys. But it, it's it's a nice it's a nice vote of confidence for Takeshita, who's yes. like who they've done a good job keeping like in the picture even when he wasn't didn't have a whole lot to do. No, absolutely. He has been kind of lurking for a little bit, he's, hasn't he? He's been, he's been <laughs> in lurker mode. Lurker mode. <laughs> which, like, keeping him on screen means that they're still paying attention. But, mm-hmm. like, when he's not actively having a storyline specifically, it's like, mm-hmm. okay, well, what's the deal? And then they kind of shove this really quickly in, mm-hmm. which is curious. I wonder what if there's, like, there's, you know, behind the scenes reasons for it or not. Mm-hmm. But, True. no, it's good to see that them to give him a belt because I think he's great. And the audience does love him even mm-hmm. as a heel. Yeah, absolutely. He's doing great things. I know he's um, 
Uh, he's been doing some New Japan stuff. Had a great showing at the G1, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and uh, I saw. I think he's a part of the the um, New Japan show coming to the Boston area here uh, next month too. Yeah, I forgot that he was. I, yeah, I forgot about the G1. So that probably explains why he's been like not a huge presence in AEW yeah, over the summer yeah. because like he's been busy. He's been. I mean, uh, it, it's like I love how Tony Storm is like off doing like Stardom and CMLL and stuff, and just having these amazing yeah. promos. We talked about on the show a couple weeks ago. Fantastic, except for the fact that because she wasn't at, I, I had been telling the person I went to the show with, um, the AEW Dynamite t- uh, that was here, I was telling them all about Tony Storm. I was really hoping Tony Storm would make an appearance, and I don't know why I assumed that that was the case, because I knew she was off in Japan or wherever, but, like, it was a little disappointing. I'm like, mm. oh, man, you're not going to get to see this, like, this specific person who was excited to, for them to see in person. Uh, that's one nice thing is, um, and, and there's other, there's other, you know, people kind of, you can think about with this, but um, when you have a cool off period where obviously Tony's coming off of like almost a year as the champion, big story needs to go away for a little bit and she can go do, you know, literally other places, right? Like this, um, versus like Jimmy Uso was just off for, um, six months <laughs> and I, 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 he may have actually been rehabbing for all we know, mm-hmm. but generally like, it's not always the case. They're just like, Hey, we're just going to write you off for a few months. They're not doing anything else. I don't know. Maybe there's TV or something else that mm-hmm. they're involved in or yeah. something like that. Or maybe it just is a, a a a relief rest period vacation for them and i wish that was i i honestly wish that was more acceptable mm -hmm. like i really Mm -hmm. do like because it should be a good thing when you don't see someone for six months and there's not an obvious health reason attached that Mm -hmm. should be like okay great they're getting a six month break they have to go year after year after year 12 months a year 365 days a year like so if they get like an extended break for just like health and well-being and to have a little bit of time off like Mm -hmm. audiences should be like cool awesome okay you know absence makes the heart grow fonder we'll see them back hopefully they'll they'll get back with a with a really interesting Mm -hmm. storyline but instead we're like we're not trained to Mm -hmm. see it that way we're trained Mm -hmm. to read in the worst either like secret injury or known injury or oh no they're being heat backstage yeah exactly yeah Yeah. nothing Uh, nothing to do yeah uh because that that's that's actually have like that actually happened yes. with like Bray mm-hmm. yep. and like Bray Wyatt was one of the top guys and he's mm-hmm. off air and they're mm-hmm. like, when's Bray coming back? Why isn't Bray here? Where's Bray? Yeah. Bray should be good yeah. here. Yeah. And it's like, he's dealing with shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's personal stuff. Right. So yeah. like, and, 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 and I think, and then, you know, you know, we, you know, there's way too many people in AEW is always the word. It's like, yeah, no, there's yeah. room for people to take a break. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. It, it's good. It should be good. But we, I, mm-hmm. we have just not been trained that way because that's never no. been the case no. when guys were like, we are trained as wrestling fans to assume that if a guy who was like being booked really solidly is suddenly not around a bunch, then they fucked up or someone fucked up or they're just not getting booked. Or they have a contract dispute. Yeah. Or... We don't get to, we don't get to like no. celebrate their time off, which sucks. Mm-hmm. Like we should be like really happy for them to get some like rest and, some R and R, but like instead we're just like, oh man, they're getting screwed over. And even if they're doing something different, like a project or a movie or something like that, it's like you know that's still like or having a kid. Yeah, we're having yeah. a kid, right? Like, like how them. much speculation was around like Killer Kelly when when she disappeared from TNA? And it was mm-hmm. like, okay, so the rumors of a movie, rumors that her contract was up, rumors that there was disputes, none of which mm-hmm. is clear. But then, like, finally, we would find out, like, oh no, she's got. She's just gonna have a kid. Like that's cool. great. Cool. Yeah. Good cool. for them. No big deal. And and that actually ha- that I actually had an issue with this before, like this week actually, when when we were talking about Brian Danielson and how he, when he when he lost and then the first thing that came out of people's mouths was, oh, when's he coming back? <laughs> this can't be. Mm-hmm. This can't be it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, settle down. Let the man to live be with his family. <laughs> yes, he wants to go live with his wife and kids also it's, it's being the same s- thing we did with john moxley back in the day where it's like let him go on vacation let yeah. him do the thing yeah also like if you're gonna say that your career is on the line and then someone ends your career you can't be back <laughs> in like two weeks and when there is it i mean he did say end of regular full-time <laughs> So, <laughs> so don't think that Brian's not coming back at Wembley next year. Or not Wembley. Yeah, well, I guess they are. No, th- are they doing Wembley? No, Forbidden Door's not at Wembley next year, but it is in the UK. But still, like then he's, you know, maybe he'll come back for Grand Slam. Maybe he'll come back for <laughs> for sure. Forbidden Door. You know, so I mean, the door is still like 
cracked open for that. He does not Mm -hmm. say, I am done. He's only, I think, 43 years old. God, he's my age. Um, And uh, yeah, he's and he's allowed to do that. He's fine. He's also maybe he's still in the office. Maybe he's still going to be backstage. Who knows? Yeah, he's fine. Let him do things. I mean, if the result of this is that Brian Danielson continues to earn a paycheck by training mm-hmm. and working with other guys behind the scenes, yep. then that's fantastic because we already know that he has made an impact for so many of the people, like has made an impact as a trainer and as a mentor for people behind the scenes there. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that's awesome. AEW needs needs as many sure pants as they can get, especially if they're willing to do that with the women's division. Talking about the show, of course, um, you know, we did have the plastic bag send off. We had a pretty down note there to Mox winning and uh, Brian being sent out on a slab practically with everybody in there. I love a random TikTok hit me about how brilliant this was because Brian is out and now you set up I, I, so the the line of the line of storytelling that they're thinking is happening and they're parsing here is Mox talking about how you know be, people being soft and kind of hardening them up, getting them rex, ready for the next phase. It's not your company anymore. Was one phrase we're still trying to figure out, and the idea of this is the thing going through this traumatic experience is what's going to make Orange Cassidy. You saw you saw glimmers of that with backstages at at the pay per view. Um, Darby Allen, you know, pushing them to be the top people. Cause now well, somebody said also that this is a very NWO like, um, God, even further kind of thing. There's like shock value to it. You know, it's kind of like the, the Nexus, um, it's kind of the Nexus meets the purge. <laughs> I think <laughs> is my vibe. <laughs> right. You're gonna okay. nod. There is no. I. I, I you yeah, see this? No, I, yeah, I see it. I see it. Like I. I really see that. And I. I mean, I. I get what they're trying to do. And mm-hmm. <sighs> Tina was there in person and said the the air went out of the room, and and yeah, Daniel Bryan's lungs. Yeah, obviously, when that happened. Oh, oh I had Sorg. That's that's mine. Sorg. That's mine. That's, mine. I mean, that, that's the point of it, though. <sighs> Riz, I'm Riz, disappointed. Riz, you're the first one to give us a true reaction to a plastic bag spot. It's literally your profile picture as you're on camera back at oh, the fight. Yeah, okay, it's, and now it, yeah. everybody has that reaction. Riz, turns out you're the true trendsetter here. Or yeah. Emily Diaz. <laughs> so. em- Emily, Emily Diaz. Yes. That's, that's pretty much it. So, um, so there's that. Um, but anyway, that was in a charity show, by the way. I just want to point that out there. It was a charity <laughs> show. That was a that was school. A show. That was a school charity show. That was, a, like, that was, that was at a, a school. That oh, was, at, was at, yeah. Pitt Univers- was at the Pitt campus. And they're just, you know, I, you, you know, the Gambinas went wild, you know, and, and, and yeah, <laughs> that's my old videographer. Yikes. <laughs> So, anyways, uh, anything else from Wrestle Dream? I thought it was a really good, solid show. Uh, I didn't get the chance to watch the Arrow Hour or anything like that. I watched it all the next day. Um, the, so the only thing I'd I'll say mm-hmm. is, I kind of wish the Mortis and Hologram match wasn't following what it was following. True. Um, definitely. Kind like of it was following the the. Takeshita Will Osprey Ricochet match. Uh, yeah, God, what are you going to put there, right? Um, so, but did you catch the implications of that match that they announced? That that was their first night on Fox Sports Mexico. Uh, this got me. So this got me on the research department here. So um, WWE left is leaving all of the Fox Sports Mexico because that's where they have their deal for all their programming. Uh, down there, right? Um, and we know that the Netflix deal outside of the U.S. is basically getting everything, everything. Mm-hmm. Basically, the entire mm-hmm. WWE nut is going into Netflix everywhere except for America for the most part. Mexico is one of those. Fox Sports is left with zero wrestling content. And not only are they getting Rampage, Dynamite, and Collision, plus the pay-per-views, which that I can tell are just a part, I mean, maybe they're on the premium app, whatever, they're on Fox Sports, however they do that down there in Mexico. They also get a Monday night program that recaps the week to take this place of Raw. Oh, geez. Yeah, like Damn. that's how all in they are, excuse the pun, um, to, to 
like what happened there. And I think you're going to see. So again, this is one of those like, hey, WWE is going to take their ball over to Netflix because they got a bunch of money for it. But you just had this giant opening for every other wrestling organization worth anything looking for TV to fill in a lot of gaps worldwide on bigger platforms in, in, in certain countries, right? So, and I don't know if Fox Sports is like the big one or anything like that. Um, but, you know, we know WWE is pretty big everywhere. So wrestling is big almost everywhere. And I, if anything's more relatable to the Mexican audience, it's AEW. Because there's a lot of crossover with CMLL right now, right? Yeah, I mean, historically, is it CMLL or? It yeah. used to be AAA, now it it's with CMLL. Because AAA, AAA yeah. I think, has a deal with TNA. And I think the tna EW relationship is a little sour right now, is my impression. Well, it, it must be non-existent at the very least. Because if they're working with mm-hmm. the other guys, mm-hmm. like, because that's still, that's still the stream that doesn't cross, right? Like, We've got a bunch of different doors wide open, but the still the two universes, these two like mega universes do not combine. Yeah. Yeah. So their partners have to choose sides essentially. Yeah. So we'll see what happens there. Um, oh, wrong way. Wrong way. Um, don't, hey, don't, don't, I know that's another button. I'm trying something over on that screen. Uh, but anyways, uh, Rosie, the rough is in the chat room before we get the Patreon. Hey. Holy F it's M. Hi, Rosie. <laughs> Uh, best dressed person in Pittsburgh. No, oh no, by a shot. <laughs> please ask M. Uh, tell us her fashion ideology. Does she take inspiration from Miss Frizzle? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh. Well, it was a Miss Frizzle for the uneducated. Miss Frizzle is the teacher from the Magic School Bus. Ah, oh. she has bright frizzy orange hair and a, a pet chameleon, and often dresses like she, her dresses are like a signature of her style because she. Is often in like a print dress that matches the lesson of the like that particular magic school bus episode or book. So like if it's like a solar system one, it's like a space dress, etc. Contextual wardrobe. Yeah, I like mm-hmm. it. I do love it. If I could like completely theme every day, it mm-hmm. would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Today is pumpkin day. Today is yes. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like it. You're too kind, Rosie. Too kind. <laughs> Um, from uh, hey, let's give a shout out to our friends that are supporting the show on Patreon, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. We have a Patreon feed as a little bit. You'll, when we go to commercial, you'll see whatever we're chatting about and everything like that. Um, uh, over there, and of course, you'll get the Patreon first, uh, whenever we do our post show, including the band persons that often join us on those shows that we are not allowed to have on the main show due to order by somebody. How do you get banned? How do you get banned? <laughs> that's, that's a story that you'll, will remind us on know. Patreon. I haven't gotten banned yet somehow. You haven't had anybody say, hey, you sh- probably shouldn't be doing that show anymore. That employs you. Well, maybe Tina now. I'm sorry, maybe Tina. Maybe Tina. I mean, Tina, maybe, Tina, yeah. Tina is like a Patreon supporter. Tina, so like yeah. a long time. Tina, I take everything the mother back. Of Dragon, I, so, take, I take everything I back. I mean, we did, we did actually have to. We had a Patreon supporter suggest banning somebody in the past. Um, and we did heat it. And then when they left Patreon, we started letting them back on the <laughs> show because I didn't entirely agree. But, you know, I was like, hey, man, you're supporting the show. I will respect your wishes. And I think you have a very good reason for it. And, oh, you know, why and that's, that's why Riz took a sabbatical. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, um, maybe I'll tell you about it on Patreon. Who knows? Um, so, anyways. Um, where are we at? Oh, Patreon. Yes, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Everybody that supports the show. Thank you to everybody at the fan of the show level. Bo Diggity! Woo! Woo! As well as Team Hammerfist, the two pack family. That's how I want to say it now, I think. Um, and Wait, should we do like the. What, what, what? No gang signs. What? Okay. No should gang we do the signs. Claps? No, should what? We do the claps? The claps? I, do, I can't even hear the claps on, your, on the Zoom, dude. I know, it's, it's, it's too fine. it's too good it's too good i didn't even hear it, the it, dog on the last show so um but also uh where was i at da, 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 da. bubba brewer of the triple b podcast and our friends apwf and jason french in the poppy club level dave Propod bonner rats in a trench coat tony kincaid and at the pizza club leather level the riz Hi. and Hi. at the manager level bradley I'm sure he loves that we do this. I think he listens to the audio version, so I don't think this is a problem. 
So no, he's yes. it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it, it's 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 part of history. So. It is part of it, and it's part of making sure it makes an impact on this show. So like this is actually a really good frame. Hashtag I mean. I point that out. Oh, this is why this is your shot from this is, BCW. This is my shot. That's why you put that over. Damn. Oh no, this is also my this is also my favorite shot. Like yes, that is that is the ever. portfolio right there. Yeah, that's a Riz folio right there. All I'll right. So speaking of recognition, there we go much better. The PWI 250 women's list. Are there not enough women to fill 500? Is that the problem, or talk are they just tired about it, tired after the 500? <laughs> I, I think it's probably a, more of that than than Oops. lack, Listen, lack of women. We know how we feel after mayhem. Yeah. Mania. <laughs> we typically have talked to on our show. We will talk to Kevin and um, Kristen Ashley and other people involved with with these lists. And I think when we've asked about that particular question in the past, mm -hmm. um, it's been one of those answers of like, we're gonna like, we'll get there. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. which, you know, they have been making steady progress in the last couple of years of that adding like 50 here, 50 there. So like, it won't shock me at all when they go to 300, when they go higher than that. But we, t we take progress where we can get it. And they've actually have like expanded the number within a really like limited mm -hmm. time, like mm -hmm. span of years. So, uh, not picking on them yet. Would love to see a proper 500 for the women because we certainly have that talent. There was mm -hmm. lots of names not on this list that like deserve to be there. Progressiveness takes time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So, yeah. and they put a lot of lists together. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I mean, I could give them. I could give them a lot of leeway here. They are doing. They're doing. They're going in the right direction. Absolutely. So, uh, Riz, Riz, why is this list? Uh, Incomplete. So it's, <laughs> is it somebody was trying to write it somebody's manually? Somebody's trying to do. Like, okay, it's from the 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 squared circle Reddit page. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I think uh, I'm, I think I'm banned. But there. yeah, <laughs> it's like they have most of them, but there are some that aren't filled in. Like mm -hmm. I think the first one's like 118. Yeah, no idea who's there. But I think it's just that they're filling them in. Whatever it. Whatever, like, as people share can, their PWI yeah. status, yeah. they're probably <laughs> finding it. They, and, they share their yeah. page because, like, you see, like the Danny Mo one, but you see, like, all the like eight people around or mm -hmm. in the in the columns to figure out who is where and stuff, right? So, um, uh, Danny Mo, I saw on there, uh, Maxine Paler at fifty nine, mm -hmm. um, is yeah, Sky Blues up there? Queen Amanada at fifty five. Uh, well, okay, let's let's go look at our top picks here. Let's, let's look at the top picks because so, I think they got, first they got it right. Let me go. Let me go. Your, give your top five here. Top five, uh, number five, Stephanie uh, Vacour, um, who's amazing. I've seen her only a couple times, and I'm completely on board. Uh, four is Micah. 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 I need the picture version of this, guys. Uh, Rhea Ripley at three, Jordan Grace at two, and Tony Storm at number one. I see no problems with there's this. No, there's I no see no no. That. You, I think, I think some people could make an argument for Rhea versus Jordan, but I think they also aren't seeing everything Jordan is doing over no. in TNA right now. Yeah. Right, like she's really, really pushing the envelope. Yeah, you're just clearly not aware that she is like still like responsible for the the bulk of what is happening in the women's division over there yes. right now. And as much as she's been on WWE TV too, so she's literally crossing. She's <clears throat> crossing the line. She, <laughs> and, and I mean, more are coming, and likely going to end up being mm -hmm. NXT talent. Mm -hmm. sooner oh, or absolutely. Later. Right. So yes. like, yeah. So we know that her time in TNA is likely to come to a close soon. Like she deserves all the attention now. She'll get more of it when she's in mm -hmm. NXT. So mm -hmm. it, it's good to have her in that top ten. I don't, some of these, I don't know if these are people or somebody just misspelled Surya. Uh, <laughs> Bailey at seven, uh, Willow, Willow at eight, Mariah May at nine. It was great for kind of the first year AEW run, I guess we can say. Uh, obviously, she's got she's got background with stardom and everything. Athena I was say, at she ten, did really good at stardom. Athena at ten, <laughs> and and somebody I remember in the chat earlier uh, on the community chat on Facebook for Mayhem Show. Um, we they were talking. Um, uh, she is um, um, underrated because she's been like the the person on Ring of Honor and carrying that for the last how long at this point? Yeah. So yeah, it's tough when you are on. It's tough when you have a high profile position in a company that has accessibility limitations Absolutely. because it's a subscription yep. thing. So like, she is doing 
incredible work. Mm -hmm. She is a dominant figure in Ring of Honor, not just of women, like a dominant figure on that roster. She is bringing people into ROH. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The problem is that it's ROH. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So absolutely. there's a ceiling. I was really hoping that they come in with this WB deal you know, or something, but you know, maybe and maybe it's still coming. Who knows? Maybe there's a separate thing where they bring it on to Max next year or something like that. So. I sure hope so because mm -hmm. there is really good stuff happening with Ring of Honor, mm -hmm. but like it's just mm -hmm. it. Who who wants to have another subscription? And also, th the way that they do their tapings now for for Ring of Honor, the way uh, aside from pay per views, the way they do their tapings. I mean, you were there. Like, mm -hmm. it's it's hard mm -hmm. to get amped for an average like episode of ROH television, essentially, because like you're paying for it now, and yep. that means yep. the quality needs to justify you paying for it. And a lot of times, what we're seeing is filmed in front of an audience that is still kind of cold. Then again, like Rampage was kind of weirdly cold too this week when they, but also it was after a late dynamite plus like those injuries at the beginning and everything like that. And for those who don't know, um, when, when, uh, Pittsburgh, uh, AEW was in Pittsburgh a few years ago, uh, God, a few weeks ago. Feels like years. <laughs> I need more coffee. Um, there was, uh, two injuries. Uh, um, the opponent for Lady Frost had some kind of injury and, um, and I think they cut short the match and, uh, Sammy Corvera. They did a stoppage. He had a match with um, Serpentico. Yes. And uh, and it was weird because it was like they landed in the same place, right? And both got mm -hmm. uh, both got carted off. Both got uh, stretched out. So it was really really scary and and not quite back to back, but it was like uh, uh, four of the matches before Dynamite, and these were two of them. Yeah. You know, so it was it was a little rough. So which makes me wonder if that championship match was supposed to happen earlier, for, perhaps. Um, cause we had rampage after a late running dynamite overrun and we got an ROH championship match between Briscoe and, um, <laughs> Taven at like 1145 on a Wednesday. So which is like, yeah, I'm still like, somebody was like, you having fun? I'm like, yep. Still here watching the main event, <laughs> you know? So, um, so it's been really interesting there, but yeah, no, I'm agree with you. I'm, I'm one of the sickos that plays for, pays for a ring of honor. You know, because I'm kind of I'm I'm here for I want to see whatever I want to see what everybody's doing on that level. Yeah, you know? and I don't I don't blame you because there's a mm -hmm. lot of good stuff happening over mm -hmm. there. It's Absolutely. just you have to make the choice to like subscribe to it, and yep. a, and a lot of people just can't can't it's manage for more. It's harder right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, maybe at least for those like hey, death for, before dishonors this month, it makes a lot of sense, yeah. right? Versus paying thirty bucks for it, forty bucks for it by itself. Uh, so I'm glad they went back to that model at least. Yes. <laughs> so, at the very least, now it makes more sense. Yes, yes, and also at that, uh, knowing that what we know now, a Bleacher Report um, fading away and AEW coming on the max, also understanding why they brought that in, or maybe they just didn't have the numbers too. So, yeah. Uh, back to it. Uh, any other standouts here on this list so far? Um, my my favorite, hmm. Maki Ito. <gasps> Where's Maki Ito? Where do you think Maki Ito is going to be? They did. She's number 69. Ah! Of course <laughs> Maki Ito is number 69. Because that's the best number. I really need, I, we really need to get Kevin on the, on the show now, just so I can be like, all right, so justify this as is, and not mm -hmm. just for the joke that you guys wanted. <laughs> yep. really? Well, I mean, I remember during the men's one, there was the 500 was just, memes so this fits perfectly with you like, what do you just tell me what you're doing here <laughs> yeah, like, um like t tell me that like give me the justification for this aside from just like we had to do it <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um nothing really kind of sticking out here as far as the the only name the only like friend of the show that i saw was uh danny mo was a part of this I'm, I'm danny mo is oh, one, got, two, got a good spot, three right? She's three spots ahead of Chelsea Green. No way. Yeah, Danny Mo is like 109. A, right? Let's go. Wow. She's been everywhere. She's been everywhere. Danny, she's Danny she's been is outraking like major sign talent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I'm I'm yeah, I'm looking at a lot of WWE talent. Like I think I think Oscar's behind her at this point. Um, but also she's been injured through much much of the year too. And also Chelsea's been really hitting a stride with like 
literally right now. Mm-hmm. Like the stuff off of that dumpster match was like incredible, right? And 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 <laughs> she still quote unquote. I watched SmackDown last night. She still smells after a week. <laughs> it's just like wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute now. You know we're kind of leaning into this too much. Thea Hale, Thea Hale. Pittsburgh local Thea, Thea Hale. Hale at one ninety four should should mm-hmm. have ranked higher. Yeah. Yeah, I think so because I I understand that she's not always, you know, I, from what I know of NXT, but like I know that she's not always utilized in matches, but like mm-hmm. when she is, she always delivers and also like she's been consistently part of the story for yeah, the entire year. Absolutely. Like her presence has meant something even when she's not active in matches. I get that like it, certain things have like because of the way that this list works, that's important that she needs to have those wins, but like I'm just a little surprised that she's that low. Um, comparatively, another local, uh, just a few spots ahead. Uh, at 191 is Lady Frost, mm-hmm. who's been doing, and, and she's and she's been getting some title matches, proving grounds matches, and things like that. Um, always gets attention when she's out there, regardless of what if it's just a squash spot or something like that. Not squash spot, but you know what I mean. Um, you know, she's obviously being put in these like, hey, we need to, you know, hey, you're on collision, you know, the spruce up, you know, Serena Deeb or something, right? Um, leading into a title match or something like that. So, and that's fine too. But still, like, whenever she's on, the tweets are all over the place for her. So she's getting attention, and she's putting together two good matches with them with great talent. Uh, anything else sticking out in here? I think it. I, oh, Alexis Littlefoot. Uh, she is. Did I see her at Stardom? I think. Yes, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, she was at the Mania. I think she was at the Mania uh, Stardom show weekend. And uh, definitely very impressive for what I think is a relatively young talent as well. Yes, yeah, she was at the she was at the show at Easy Dabs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, it, it, she's the one. I, believe, she, I, I saw an interaction between her and Sumi Sakai <laughs> after the match, which is she's like, you always get me so like so stressed out or something like that, you know, <laughs> going into the match. And, you know, it was a six woman match as yeah. you know, a lot of those were that night and everything like that. And she really, really stuck out on that night against, you know, Starm's like a crazy amount of talent on those shows. So even for a relatively like that show was under two hours. Like it was a breezy show. That show. It was crazy. That show is maybe the shortest wrestling show I've ever been to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you if you, unless you count like the free shows that mm-hmm. Enjoy has done, et cetera, sure, where they like sure, do like sure. hour blocks. No, of an actual ticketed show that you like, you know, pay good money to go to. But it didn't feel like it. I'm not saying that was that's a bad thing. Too many shows are too long. Mm-hmm. Too yes, m- I don't need a three hour show, especially many a weekend where you probably got like three shows that day. Well, and that was perfect for the stardom show because we were going from whatever GCW show, the the two shows that we had watched, yeah. run into stardom, yeah. and then a bunch of people left stardom and ran back to GCW to catch the second half of Bloodsport because they could. They had time. Mm-hmm. Whereas I was just like, eh, fuck it, I'm going to get dinner because then we were going back for a DDT mm-hmm. at, at, at the collective. So like, but it, as a result, stardom fit right in that pocket. It was perfect. People got got to have the best of both worlds. No, more short shows during Mania <laughs> Weekend, please. Awesome. Well, uh, pretty good list. I, I generally, uh, you know, what are you seeing from this list? Does everything, any any arguments with any of these listings so far or anything like that? Nah, nothing. I'm going on the record. <laughs> no. I mean, to, to go back up, to back up with Athena for a minute, mm-hmm. she's going to be top five next year. They got, there's gotta be something coming up with her, right? Like she, so. she her snowball effect is mm-hmm. getting too hard to like ignore. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So she's going to be top five. It, it's hard because like they can't necessarily award placement on this based on like sheer charisma or it factor, right? Mm-hmm. Like there has to be some measurement so that they can like stand behind these rankings as like in some qualitative form. But you know, when you see someone who clearly is going to have that big era of their career, like right beforehand, and then you see that they're like pretty low on a list like this, it it's surprising. I mean, and 10 on a 250 out of 250 isn't that low, but still, it's going to be fun. 
watch to see her rise even further. Um, I want to make sure I, I did not mess this up because I saw that Alexis from um, Kentucky and I want to make sure I'm not confusing her with somebody else I saw recently. But anyways, we'll double check that in a minute. But in the meantime, oh, no, okay. I might Ooh. be mistaken. Alexa Littlefoot, I probably know from NeoPro. I think I'm confusing her with another girl from, um, from Stardom. If I'm not mistaken, I'm looking at her... Uh, 2024 cage match. Yes, I think she's more of a regional wrestler right now, but she's sticking out there. No, she was one that stuck out with she's she stuck out on Neo Pro. I'm sorry, I'm confusing that. Um, so now I want to now I want to find out who I'm talking about from Stardom. Yeah, who are we talking? Okay, about? guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go look at the Stardom card from the ECW Mania weekend during the break, and then I'm going to correct myself. So that yeah, she was actually on two matches and um in uh, Neo Pro. Um, it was actually the Neo Pro show I went to in March. That's where I met her. Okay. Listen, that was within like three weeks of each other, two weeks of each other. So I think that's why I'm meshing them. Um, but, uh, awesome. So that is on Indie Wrestling Network, which is good timing because you can go to IndieWrestling.us and catch up on all this wrestling, including our friends at Neo Pro Wrestling. The last year of shows, their first year of, of shows is over at IndieWrestling.us on VOD over there streaming. And we are uh, pro providing DVDs. Uh, I've got some orders going out here in the very near future for those as well. And uh, they have a show next week uh, on the 25th. Fifth uh, of this month up in Salem, Ohio. If you want to go check that out in person as well, good crew, good shows up there. They've had Tommy Dreamer, Dreamer, and Rhino there in recent months as well because all the ECW guys are coming back to the area lately. I've noticed, um, and of course this weekend we got a lot going on with our friends at Thursday Night Fights as, at AD Wrestling, and as well as their their debut at the Penn Brewery uh, is going to be streaming on there, and also RWA's. Uh, was a bloody harvest is going to be harvest. this weekend, and that includes a dog collar match between. Get it right. Get it right. <clears throat> Super hentai Preston the... Everest and HL Supreme. Why are you mad? Why are you mad, Riz? Super hentai. Super sorry. hentai. The quotations. He purchased the name from. HL Supreme somehow. I don't know. Then he's then he's Eagle super hentai. He's, he's he's yeah. He has the name, he has the he has the chain, he has he does have moves, a chain. He has the mask. He, yeah. He's super hentai. Different tattoos. He's the though. guy that I've really seen nice in like He's the he's like, the guy that had an years. epic ladder match with Troy Lords in 2006? Yes. Oh, okay. I've seen him headbutt somebody and have a big knot on that guy's head. Okay. Okay. Absolutely, the same person. Bud. Absolutely, the same same person, bud. Well, you can figure that out for yourself here. Uh, and of course, our debate is going to have a free, uh, free, free match, and and I, I find out what the free match is going to be, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun for you guys. So go check all of that out. IndieWrestling US. A lot of fun wrestling for you guys to watch and catch up on there. And you never know. You never know who's going to pop up. Uh, so speaking of which, uh, we have two people that were in the audience of enjoy wrestling's, uh, 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 very evil this past weekend. No spoilers, of course, because their show is going to be coming yep. out soon generally, but we could talk about some moments and some that yep. are already <laughs> over, all over social media. I noticed, um, but, uh, some, especially with some of our local guys that were included in some matches here. Um, but, uh, but generally this is a new venue for enjoy and, and, you know, obviously like enjoy is going to make a splash here, uh, uh, lately, um, you know, just kind of just bringing kind of, um, you know, I guess I can say high quality production wrestling into the Pittsburgh area and into the city itself. Um, there's actually their second one in the city cause, uh, you know, CJ was the first and we talked a lot about that. Um, so you guys are in the audience. I was, um, behind production helping out for the first time with enjoy, um, on some stuff and, um, but, uh, and indie wrestling.us. So full disclaimer, indie wrestling.us did sponsor, uh, the Dan Housen versus Darius Carter match, which was a good pick by the way. Um, really so, uh, two of my favorites in wrestling uh, going at it. I didn't know I needed to see that match <laughs> for sure. <laughs> didn't know I needed to see that match. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know that's a match that I needed. I needed to exist in my life, I mean, but I was here for it. Both wrestlers. Fantastic. Enjoy both wrestlers immensely. Mm -hmm. Never in my brain put them in the same ring. No, no. Just never did. Yeah. They're two of like the most different ends of the <laughs> extreme <laughs> so. of just how wrestling is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One's super serious. One's, 
fucking Dan Housen. Dan Housen. <laughs> and both of them big characters, but in very different mm-hmm. ways, right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. they have different wrestling styles, but they're also like very different types of characters while still both being very big. Mm-hmm. So it worked really well. But it just wasn't like it wasn't any kind of recipe. Like it's like when you discover that like two flavors go together, you're like, wow, okay unlocked what else can we do with this this is a wonderful box of neapolitan here <laughs> it's, you, a, it's me you got chocolate in my peanut butter you, <laughs> or or you got teeth in my peanut butter however you want to roll with that uh so um i definitely got a tooth you definitely got a tooth i did yeah the person i was with wanted a tooth and i was like well i'm gonna get a tooth for them so i scrambled up towards the ring and some guy was like grabbing a bunch that were on the ground and he had like four of them on. i was like i was like come on you have like four teeth Give that, up that, so, that is the don't bogart the teeth man that is the weirdest sense so so but it's for rest professional wrestling fits so well into that sense riz, riz i told you about when we were doing conquest and they had a dan Housen spe- featured show and there's barricades there but the children mm-hmm. pass the barricades to all come and gather teeth at the ringside <laughs> Like a gaggle of children, like I turned around, and they were like coming at me and then bypassed me for the pile of teeth. And I was like, what is happening right now? Why are we letting these kids at the ringside right now post the Anhausen match? Um, I also, I have to say, this is the second time I've been in a crowd of people chanting teeth, teeth, teeth <laughs> um, in about a three week time period. Okay. So I'm not saying that's a lot. But I'm saying that it's kind of funny that it's happened more than once, considering mm-hmm. how short a time frame we're talking about. Yeah, just like it, just in the several months, I can't believe how many bag suffocations I've seen in pro wrestling. I was like, well, this is an interesting line, you know? Yeah, so, like, I mean, it's a tr- yeah. oh no, we're in the trend. Yeah, everyone's gonna be doing it now. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. maybe everybody's gonna do it shitty on the indies, even though it was the indies I saw it first. Um, amazingly, so the best one I saw was like on Mystery Wrestling, where the guy just pour a hole into the bag mm-hmm. and yeah. then they're like oh that's how you do it that's how you that. <laughs> somebody somebody show brian this um so anyways um uh you know what do you think of the venue the vibe um uh, anything else from the show there uh in person um, i don't know uh emily if you saw just the amount of people in track suits that were there what like in the audience in the audience um like I was like, it was weird. Like I, 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 I this is what I, like, this is what perplexed you all night. You're here, yes. You're at a brewery with arcade games and Danhausen and oh, and all arc, this by stuff. The way, I, there and is approximately a good story about, two bathrooms. About What's that? And approximately like two bathrooms. Yeah, that, that are was, like was, miles was, away <laughs> from where the ring is. Yeah, that, oh that was God. fun. So I really appreciate that, uh, Mister Sp- uh, that um. Enjoy has been branching out from Mr. Smalls and doing these like experiments with like really big venues like Stage AE and more reverent venues like Vellum Fermentation. And I really like Vellum as a space. It was my first time there and I really, mm-hmm. I, I thought it was a great space. The one caveat, the one catch, and if they ever have a wrestling show here again, they need to consider this is that there are three single stall bathrooms, mm-hmm. like three single bathrooms in the entire establishment and they are located in the back cafe area. So you have to walk down a long, long corridor to get there. There's a whole two toilets in one of the men's rooms. So the one around the corner. Well, okay. (laughs) <laughs> didn't stop the line from i know that's not that's not gonna do a lot and, and i don't i don't know what the draw is for that place i know they, they uh I, I think they close to if not sold out the ringside all the ringside seating and, and just had standing room only yeah uh so and they I, you know i got the sense we had a friend come a little late and i got the sense that at some point they weren't doing a whole lot of like super close observation as far as who was coming in the door no so at a certain point so like there were likely people in the standing room area that like didn't pay to be there <laughs> no. just wandered in yeah i, I a regular kinda wrestling got, show i i kind of i kind of got that vibe mm-hmm. like I, yeah. like even even when i like yeah i mean yeah i'll, I'll probably speak to afterwards but yeah it would it, it, i mean it, it, it was just like people just like came in mm-hmm. it, but it was wrestling. It was fun. Um, uh, the question came from the chat room: uh, Why the track suits? And I think that's the question you're asking. You're just you just sure. noticed a like, lot of the patrons like, had track was, suits. South side, maybe it, like was people. It, it's like a South side. Th- maybe it could like, be the South side thing. You know, like it was. People just wandering off Carson on the track suits. Like welcome to the like, flats. The, 
the one person that was standing next to the entire night had a bright green tracksuit on. Uh, and then all of a sudden this one guy comes through with what another tracksuit on. And then another guy who's even bigger, who looks like a beefier version of Wardlow. A beefier? A beefier. I think, wait, was this like old Wardlow you told me about? Yes. <laughs> old <Okay>. Wardlow. <laughs> yeah, like he was man bun, but gray beard Wardlow. Okay. Maybe and it, it was, was just Wardlow incognito. It was, but he was like, triangle shaped <laughs> oh like, like like how some hot, rot. like sometimes like when guys get really beefy in a specific way they look like a dorito yes they broad get, shoulders like, yeah yeah like i always say that that's what pack looks like pack looks like a dorito because mm-hmm. he's shaped just like a triangle the, yeah. that's the um particle man by they might be giants where they talk about triangle man they're talking about pack he's this perfect <laughs> triangle <laughs> Uh-oh. But yeah, like that's all I like that's all I thought about that entire like mid <laughs> pre show. I'm like built like a brick like, Is it just a is it like, like I'm looking okay, is, like is this like a house? Exactly. Like is it my good should I is it should I be worried? Should I like not be here? What's going on? Like, <laughs> like I we, watch I've seen this movie. <laughs> yeah, I've I've seen <laughs> like, Oh my god, before. it's a tracksuit was, mafia from Hawkeye. <laughs> was, were you worried that like you would look down at some point at your own self and you would be Wearing a tracksuit, yes. But like suddenly, like we're all in tracksuits. We're all you're. We're, oh. we're, we're. It's all of us. I'm definitely not going to have nightmares about that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I mean, they're so comfortable and stylish. They Why are. Which, 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 which is funny. It's a dream. I think enjoys one of the only um as a wrestling promotion, one of the only high profile companies that don't have their own tracksuits right now. <laughs> so. yeah, I was gonna say, Sorg, <laughs> you had a track jacket. Uh, I did. I did so, wear mine in. Yeah, I don't. So I, Sorg I, 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 was part of the problem. Right? No, 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 no. I just, yeah. I, I, just have your I got fault, my Sorg. New Japan. I just, I was just. It was cold. I had my New Japan jacket. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, just how I rolled. Um. So yeah. I did. I was not wearing a tracksuit. No. Okay. <laughs> I was. But I. Either. But I could. Oh man, I made one of those like early two thousands like velour tracksuits with like something written on the butt. <laughs> Like pink or plush or something. <laughs> but I wanted to I wanted to be something like really stupid. Like like teeth. <laughs> Just put teeth. 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 No, that feels like an invite. Oh yeah. That's oh true. yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to yeah, do that. No, yeah, no, yeah. No. Especially especially with some place there's alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that's not gonna no. end well. Yeah, you know, I I can say I don't like long entrance ways because there's a oh, lot. That was I had some flashbacks really to RWA. That was that <laughs> people was, people doing Batista poses while we're waiting for the people to come out. I'm like, oh, that was a <laughs> runway length. Yeah, yeah, entrance, mm-hmm. and we recorded so we and, couldn't go the whole way. Yeah, <laughs> so. and I feel bad because uh, Honey Darling was mm-hmm. was one of the guards that was trying to. I think not have uh, people cross the line. I think she's the official. Line. But there's too much. There was too much space. There's there was it. way too much space. When you have that much space, waiting. there's no way to avoid no, it. No, there isn't. There no. isn't. And then, like, I'm just standing there, and I'm just like, she's looking at me. I'm like, okay. Like my arms <laughs> Wait, were did you become like, part of the security now? Of, did she, she the security know you're not working that night? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think so. But she, yeah, she's oh. looking at you. She's like, "Why are you slacking? Come on, get get to yeah, work." On, you're like, on. "You're like, you're Where, always with Sorg. You must be on like, duty right now." Your where's your camera? And I was like, "No, you on. go sit in the seats. You got my ticket." So, but <laughs> I was not sitting in a seat. Sorg. You were not sitting was, in a seat. No, no, you. Didn't. I did. I did what I do all of the time, which is stand for eight hours. Oh, oh man. I sat and it was great. Enjoy having a seat and enjoy. I will hey. say that them going back to to Mr. Smalls in December, I'm psyched because I miss I miss Smalls as their venue. Different vibe, different vibe. Yeah. It's a very yeah. different vibe there. But it, it's been mm-hmm. kind of fun to have shows where I get to sit. Mm-hmm. I mean, an old lady. Like it's it, nice to like not stand for several hours. Eight eighty has eight eighty has a row of seats on Saturday. Really? Yeah, <laughs> uh, they only have the first row. And One it's almost row. sold out, but you can bring your chair if you have GA. So that's, <laughs> so just I just, I was just looking at details today. I, I mean, was, so, yeah. so just putting that out there to plug the 880 show at Penn Brewery this weekend. Let's keep this brewery 
uh, situation BYOC, going in Pittsburgh. Let's go. Technically, you can BYOC to the regular 880 shows, but you will be sitting. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to. Actually, they do sell. There's the seats on the wall on the opposite side that they sell as VIPs and for the handicap. I, I didn't think. know that you could actually purchase like tickets for those seats. We need to, I don't know what's happening at the front of the room, but we need to have a conversation about that apparently. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, I was there when he was, he was going over that. So anyways, damn it. anything else for the, weekend? <laughs> for the show? I mean, go ahead. The, pal- the palace and MV young match. So good. So, so good. Real good, real good. So fun. And I'm surprised it was the first time they've yeah. ever. I fought. didn't know that. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Considering how you know long they've both been around, like mm-hmm. I, I'm really surprised. I also thought that uh, TME Kings of the District match was the Ooh. match of the night. Yes, yes. Yep. Um, not to speak ill of any of the other matches, but I, I just that match, so like ruled. It was so good, and I'm I'm a mark uh, for uh, for Kings specifically Jordan Blade. So mm-hmm. like I'm a little biased in that regard, but I just think the teams had tremendous chemistry, and it's always really fun to see a powerhouse team go up against a team that has more like you know, flying in like technical chops. So like, it's just the perfect dynamic. Uh, Maybe want breadsticks for some reason. What? Really? Yeah. Like, because like all the like ankle snapping, you're like, I want to snap. Oh, it you didn't hear it. You didn't. Maybe I'm just. Oh, hearing. wait. Oh, the Olive yeah, Garden the, stuff. The, the Olive Garden versus uh cheesecake factory chance. Yeah. What? What? You, you were there. Okay, okay, understand. <laughs> you were working. Understand, I'm working, and in one ear is the mix, and it. I didn't have any crowd noise in my mix because of the way we were recording ah. some things. Mm. So all I got is is Gem and Rich and <laughs> in, my, in my ear and some, some other stuff that I'm just, like, I'm not doing master mixes. So it's just like, mm. I just have to make sure it's there, you know, yeah. and, 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 yeah. and then that's it. So, and I had zero audience mics. So... Like there, the only thing I can hear is coming from literally the headsets at ringside. <laughs> there was, was an argument between Jordan Blade and Duke Davis about where where they were gonna go to dinner, where they, was, <laughs> where they went to dinner, where they like, were where they went. Wait, like, is that that the they, face off at the beginning of the show? Where they were supposed yeah. to I thought go that to was dinner? just a hype thing. I didn't know there was an actual food conversation. Well, there was an exchange on Twitter that was about like getting taken to dinner and then they were debating on where dinner was <laughs> and Duke Davis insisted Olive Garden and Jordan countered with Cheesecake Factory. Oh, mm-hmm. the ultimate question. Cheesecake Factory is closer though. So, gentlemen, yeah, right which one are you choosing? Wh- which side of that That's actually a on? good that's actually a good question. That's a, that's that's a that's I will, a dating I profile will, uh question there. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. I will I will I like both places. <laughs> oh, to a certain oh, extent. No. oh no, we're we're both oh, siding no. it. But, oh no. But oh, no. Oh, but Where are you taking the lady? Cheesecake Factory has cheese cheesecake. Where are you taking the lady? That's true. Cheesecake but, Factory has cheesecake and actually, a whole list of cheesecake. Olive Garden also has those type of cheesecake desserts and tiramisu. But how much? There's is there a menu full of cheesecake? No. But do you really need a menu full of cheesecake? Like after a certain Dude. point, it's getting redundant. It's like those places that have like a gazillion ice cream flavors, like, okay, cookies and cream and like, like vanilla cookie explosion. These are the same thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess you're right. I mean, take but that still, cold stone creamery, but yeah. still they, they have enough flavors where you can be like, okay, there's a lot of cookies and cream and there's birthday cake. That's, you know, it's not really a flavor, but it's, they have other stuff with the cheesecake they have like a blueberry cheesecake they have a it but they have pudding cheesecake which is by the way my favorite cheesecake i would really like this if this became like the jericho list and you just started yes. listing all the cheesecakes and then we went to break and then when we came back you were still listing cheesecakes on the cheesecake factory menu well either way we can enjoy wrestling we can enjoy restaurants and cheesecake and we can also enjoy these ads and we'll be back to talk more wrestling after we apparently get a snack or some sort. We'll be right back. No I'm Eamon. I'm Merlin. And we're a gay. And his NB. Are you a reality television connoisseur? Do you like it discussed from an LGBTQ lens? If so, a gay and his NB is the podcast for you. Hear us break down all your favorite guilty pleasure reality shows from Bravo, Drag Race, and just about everything in between. 
Listen to A Gay and His Envy on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Cheesecake, cheesecake. Reese's peanut butter chocolate cheesecake. Godiva chocolate cheesecake. <laughs> See, they have everything. Coconut cream pie cheesecake. Adam, I don't know who Adam is. Adam's peanut Adam. butter cup fudge ripple cheesecake. Adam has a cheesecake? Adam has a cheesecake. Like the Adam of the Bible? I don't know. Oh my. It doesn't oh, no. say who is Adam there is. An apple or a snake in it? Or a rib? Celib- or, or all three. You don't know. That's an awkward but one to sit, share with your lady, though. <laughs> celebration cheesecake, obviously. There's a bit. Ooh, now, the Cinnabon Ooh. cinnamon squirrels cheesecake. Ooh. Cinnamon squirrels? Swirl. Swirl. Right, okay. Tar- toasted marshmallows. S'mores galore, which is actually one of the ones I've had before. It was okay. Fresh banana cream cheesecake, my favorite. Why is s'more uh, stuff never as good as you want it to be? Like, what, aside it, from actual it, s'mores. But, like, you get a s'mores, the, like, t- like flavored treat or something. I got a more important question. What the hell is a snickerdoodle? Oh, it's a, it's a cinnamon so sugar cookie. Cinnamon, yeah. You okay. don't know that? I don't know. You never made Dolce it. de Leche never been cr- caramel cheesecake. Ooh, Dolce. Oh, that sounds good. Anyways, anyways, we'll forward this all to Jordan and Duke Davis. We have from the chat room. Hershey's chocolate bar cheesecake. Matt That's is in the chat good. room. Matt Perch, my favorite match of the night from Enjoy was either the insane seven way ladder match or the Mikey oh. Montgomery versus Billy Dixon, which involved handcuffs, by the way. It so it, it did. Oh, God, am I spoiling? Really? Oh, really? well, uh, no. yeah. Hmm. Yeah, no. we won't get it. Well, I mean, after this picture. Well, you don't know who's doing the handcuffing. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I'll say that they were like a really long set of handcuffs. Yes, and then yeah. and Mikey's tiny, so it kind of worked. Oh, <laughs> Sorg. Sorg. What? Sorg. We you don't, don't know. know who was handcuffed. You don't know. We were handcuffed together. I don't know. Ooh. Find out when enjoy. This is their footage. Lowlicious so. cheesecake. With God, Riz, Riz. We got to bring it back around. What the hell did I even note for this section of the show? I don't even. Damn it. Instead of a dog collar match, you got two guys who are like handcuffed to each other. Yeah. Oh. Do they do that? Have they done that? Uh. That's got it. That's got that, it. Isn't it? That has to be a thing. I mean, it's like a it's like a leather strap match or something, yeah. or a chain match or yeah. something. Like I've seen those kinds of versions, but um, I actually have nothing for this segment. I guess I don't know unless there's something WWE to talk about. Um. Never. No. He no, <laughs> does not. I don't. I. I mean. I, I still. I, I <laughs> update. Know. I still don't watch it. <laughs> okay. Not even for Rhea. Not even for Liv. We got some great. They got, no. I because everybody's involved because now Nia is going to wrestle Liv for a big multi diamond belt in Saudi belt. Arabia. Um. So Looks now like everybody crazy. is involved on every show, and it's a whole crazy lady fest. I do what a lot of people do when it comes to these storylines, and I just like get the highlights on, on Twitter. And that is yeah. perfectly fine. I watch the YouTube highlights. What happened this week? I think you get the gist of it. Um, you know, you know what the bad thing is. Hmm. Like I, I know they went to two hours, mm-hmm. but I always forget they went two hours. So when I like, I'm on. I'm I'm on like the computer a lot and yeah. I'm just looking at stuff. Then I realize it's ten o'clock. And then I go back done. And then and then I go back and back. now and now I'm watching the anonymous, which again is no ratfish. I'm just gonna point that out there every time. It's no ratfish. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to dropout.tv. It's an amazing show. But like I'm I, I kind of miss the three hours, but I'm not gonna complain about it. Because like, like we were saying, we can just watch it on clips and and shit. Like I if we ne- see something fun, we can. Like I did, I watched the War Raiders come back, yes! which is amazing. Oh, that's cool. Yes! I mean, that, okay, that's cool. As the War Raiders. As the War Raiders. Okay, that's yes. cool. That's cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. And they uh, they murdered Tazawa. Almost. Mm-hmm. That was a gross move. <laughs> yeah. I don't know because Tazawa is so tiny, but. Holy crap! Um, no, I'm here. I'm here White for chocolate that. raspberry truffle cheesecake. <laughs> damn it! I'm just gonna throw these in here every every few minutes, just just to see if you're 
just seems to paying attention. Um, it was actually it was very women's talent focused. I thought last night on Raw, like I felt like it was like half the show between Rhea. We had a Rhea segment start the show, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we had a big schmoz thing. We had the tag match with with Rhea and, and Tiffany Stratton teaming up. Um, and 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 did we have a we had a women's title match last night too with the uh, game is control. So and we had the NXT girls on Friday as well uh, against the champions. So like I, I'm enjoying watching. I, I sat down to watch SmackDown, flipping through the commercials and stuff, and I ended up like, oh no, I still have 15 minutes until I can watch Raw on the DVR. <laughs> so <laughs> I went to watch something else for a while. <laughs> And then watch. I'm like, this is so breezy right now. Like WWE is no longer homework. <laughs> this is my feeling. I'm not even like burn out that I don't want to watch NXT after the after the show tonight. Right. I'm probably going to put it on while I'm editing this podcast. So like I'm like, thank you. Thank you for WWE. For, I don't know where this does. I know SmackDown is going to go to three hours and that's going to be a whole nother bag. But at least it's like three hours I can sit on, sit down on Monday, watch my three hours and skip the commercials and then put on Raw after. It's still a night thing for me, you know, which is kind of nice. So because weekends are just everywhere. Um, So that's the WWE report. (laughs) Go watch it because it's kind of easier now. So, you know, um, and can't wait for Netflix in January. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so actually no i can't i actually can't wait for that i want to see what that does in that landscape that's so wild to me it's gonna be so weird. wwe's Ooh. on netflix like like that's such a game changer you know it's been i know they did a spot where they went to TN, tnn and spike or whatever for like, like two years or something but man that has been a mainstay for like 30 years on usa network like Shows are, the shows are the landscape now, is I guess. Yeah, I'm really curious. I mean, this is just from like my personal background, but I'm very curious how that change is going to work from an interface level because mm-hmm. Netflix it doesn't have a fan doesn't have a particularly good interface right now. No, it used to have a much cleaner one, and now it's very. It's messy. got a lot of stuff going on. Um, and Peacock has never been particularly good, but it's gotten a little bit easier to browse the WWE like holdings there. And like once you figure out how to get what you want, it's easy enough to to search it and to mm-hmm. like find those categories. I'm interested to see how this is organized on Netflix. Like if it's all going over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. And and plus we don't have. I don't think Netflix has had a steady live component to it they just uh, announced a john mulaney uh talk show that's going to be live coming up next year yeah because they did one as an mm-hmm. experiment during uh the like some comedy festival in la mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it and the show itself was not good but mm-hmm. it was like it it did stream live they've been tiptoeing mm-hmm. they've had some problems with like a reunion a reality show reunion show they did um the wait the tyson fight happens this time they're going to be doing that uh, they did some kind of golf outing with Formula guys, which makes sense since they do Drive to Survive on there. Um, yeah, they so did the. This is going to be big. They did the the hot dog eating contest. The was... hot dog eating contest, you know, big time stuff. Yeah. Um, so, but but like I think Rod's going to be a really big one for them, mm-hmm. you know, to to see what that capacity is, and it may. I think we're further along than you know, the early days of WWE Network where we're trying to watch the NXT arrival and it's really kind of skippy, you know, and it wasn't really working right. But, you know, everything came around and, like, it's not often that we get that problem much anymore. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I have no idea how it will change behind the scenes as far as mm-hmm. um, how things are, like, filmed and how things are captured for the, for streaming via Netflix. But I imagine that, like, they, they can make it work pretty well. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to do. I, I think th- they keep saying, that, like, oh, there's not going to be the commercial breaks the same way. But, like, also understand, like, Netflix has a commercial tier. Mm-hmm. So, I think, like, it, you know, much like when you, we, you know, pay-per-views have changed, PLEs, on Peacock. Because now you have this weird gap where everybody else is getting tied commercials. And you're getting a recap for the next match. Right? And they are formatting around that. Mm-hmm. There's bigger gaps between those matches on those pay-per-views than there used to be. Right? Um, it's noticeable when you're in the crowd for sure. Yeah. But then, you know, you get, um, you know, I think you're going to get like, you're going to get house ads or we're going to get promos. It's not going to be clean. Like there's no ads. Let's go. You know, I I can't imagine that's how they're doing, but it's going to be like the, it's going to be like the, sorry, I didn't mean to 
but it, it's going to be like the first hour, like when they did like the first hour is commercial free. Yeah. And there's like, there's these, the giant bucket of KFC chicken right in front of you. <laughs> there's going to be integrated ads. Oh, well, yeah. integrated ads are going to be, because your number, your eyeballs are going to probably well, go up. Well, they do that with, they and, do that with the PLEs anyways. They have the, the mm, banner mm, splattered everywhere. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're going to see more of that integrated advertising, which is what it is. We see it in every other sports, you know. Um, so I just want to see, I just want to hear Michael Cole f- say fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is the, not, that not is Pat, the future that Pat, I dream of. <laughs> not Pat McAfee. Cause he says it every, every damn day, but I want to see Michael Cole say fuck. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I mean, do we think that's the implication is that like it, the product itself could become less family friendly because it's on Netflix? I think they are, they've they announced that they intend they, to. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah right? absolutely. Uh, Toddy Tundera is in the YouTube chat tonight. And Toddy! Cable is low key back is just his under half names. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, so mm-hmm. yeah absolutely and the, the, we're not that podcast so i'm not going to get into that uh but <laughs> i hear a lot of those conversations about it. and even like a lot of these are included in your like uh, you know your bundles and stuff with cable i get your disney and stuff like that right mm-hmm. uh also who's this mr mcmahon guy they're talking about on netflix he seems bad <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah that's that's gonna be weird this is yeah that was my reaction because i was like oh oh interesting an interesting uh collision hey, of, he's not of, there of, anymore of I think his, my theory, my running theory right now is other than like there was a theory that I think busted open or something said or, or no, there's the Matt Kemp uh, busted open that I was listening to. And he was like, hey, they did this now to clear the slate. This is the past. We're going in the future with with what, who's there now. Uh, I also think it was a they shut it down. He left. They spun it back up because he left. Yeah. And we're like, well, we can't offend anybody now. Let's go. So we got a production we spent all this money on. <laughs> then we got over and we wrote out our contracts and have all our permissions to do whatever we want with it. So it's just such a weird like preamble to the introduction of WWE on Netflix because yep. it's yep. like, so hey, remember that company that was attached to that guy that you really don't like now because yeah. of all the horrible, heinous shit that he's responsible for? This is that company. Woo! Welcome. Absolutely. Watch us every week. <laughs> Please. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, yeah, watch us every week. So, yeah, d- just duh. Here's, here's all. Listen, here are all the skeletons. So we can just move past this. I, mean, I just like to think about the future things. It's <laughs> It's not a bad strategy to be like, okay, well, we already talked about this. But like, listen, we have a past. Who doesn't have a past? Especially a company on this scale, right? So, and here is, the and feature. he ain't here anymore. He's gone. Here's the He's feature gone. on Netflix. Woo. Yeah, see all those bad people in this? They're not around anymore. Um, Triple oh. H will save us all. Papa H will save us all. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways. Thank you to saving our stomachs every week here in the studio uh, for it being us and our guests, our friends at Slice on Broadway, New York City style. Yins are made, Beachview, Carnegie, East San- I don't know, everywhere. They're everywhere, man. They're <laughs> everywhere. I have a restaurant saying, hey, there's a slice by me. I, I, I checked them out, and they're, they're really digging them. So check them out, New York City, Yins are made. Call them. Make sure they put you on hold so that you hear that amazing theme song that they have for the whole music. Have you heard this, Riz? No, there's a stars on Broadway. <laughs> Dude, you're excited. They have a th- they have Oh my th- god, it's great! It's oh, great. Wow. I wonder if they post it on their social media or something. I laugh. So I need to call time. them and be like, uh, "Can you put me on hold for a minute?" Just ho- Dude, yeah, listen. Just, just call them like five o'clock. Put me on hold. Else. So I call. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's like, can you put me on hold? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it online, but I just want to hear the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I mean, listen, just call them at five o'clock when everybody else is calling for pizza and you'll get it. <laughs> okay. Yes. So if I'm like a few minutes late of when I usually call them, like I'm going to wait because they get busy real quick at the end of the day. So, uh, anyways, so thanks to our friend Slice on Broadway. Everybody, chat room, ladies and germs out there on the internet, what did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned I need to invest in like, tracksuits yeah apparently we need some mayhem show tracksuits you need some grit and glitter pack and some suits, mango you know? key lime cheesecake oh my god, <laughs> oh my god. imagine the grit and glitter tracksuit that i could oh. own like th- this has to happen now it's got to actually have glitter on it right and, yeah and that's what will go on the butt grit and glitter 
Mm-hmm. Like she, on the same one, or no, no. once she gets the grit, once she gets the glitter. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. That's it. All right. Um, Thank you, sharks. That's our. Thank uh, you, shark. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this will. Oh man, that's it. That's why I do wrestling. That's I. That's I've solved what I wear to wrestling shows for forevermore. <laughs> forever. <laughs> I'm getting a custom velour tracksuit for velour. my podcast with glitter letters on it. No, no, it's got to be velour. Come on, mm-hmm. Scott. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe a breezier one for the spring and summer months. Yeah, some of those places. Uh, so <laughs> when Taco Mania is out in the sun. Uh, oh, so. and I also learned Andrew Palace is the nicest pinball player ever. <laughs> yeah, you had an encounter with Andrew at yes. the pinball, huh? Yes. Um, so during intermission, I'm like, I'm just going to play pinball. Of course. I didn't even get to look at the arcade games. I was so uh, after After my little walkies that I had, I went back in and I, I had to. So I had to go do ten dollars worth of this because that was the minimum yeah. they, mm-hmm. for a card, mm-hmm. which seemed ex- excessive. But okay. you know, so I I played about maybe two three th- two three games, mm-hmm. and of course there was a Weird Al pinball machine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So of course I'm going to play that, and then all of a sudden Andrew Palace comes over. We start talking. He wants. He goes, "Yeah, after the show, I'm just gonna play this the entire day like, until it closes." I'm like, "Oh, fuck yeah, that's amazing!" Like we just started talking back and forth, and after the show, I just, I still had like this wad of tokens in my hand, and I'm like, "Here, here you go," and I just place it in Andrew Palace's hands. He's like, "Can I give you a hug?" I'm like, "Fucking yes." <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Andrew Powell's asked you for a hug. By the way, I yes. just had I just had to look at the Weird Al uh, pinball machine video because I'm just kind of because I didn't get to just look at it. It <laughs> is it is thing. a giant screen, mm-hmm. and it's it looks like it. it's got a hamster wheel in it. It, it got Harvey a hamster wheel. Okay, incredible. <sighs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, Emily Fear, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Um, I learned that I'm not cool enough to get a hello from Riz at a wrestling show. Aww. Yeah. I feel so bad. We I, I'm, I, I feel, we I feel bad. We talk about this, but yeah. No. I waved hello and I got You iced. did wave hello I got and iced. I did not see the hello. <sighs> so Andrew Palace gets a handful of tokens and I get yes. Riz gave up all of is his goodwill. Because, is it because all my the, all my because my hair isn't as good as his? Because I get it. He's got that like luxurious lion mane. Oh, you mean palace? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your hair. Not Riz is like me. what? No. Riz is like this. This. This hair. Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, it's it's it is gorgeous. It's like very like it works for you. It, it works sweet. for you in your head. It's yeah. all right. It's, yeah, it's wow. the hair on your head. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean. You gotta, I will you gotta, make it up you, to you next time. You got a good Bruce Willis going. And I will owe you a cheesecake. Oh. Whoa. Oh, yes. Shit. Like maybe a chocolate caramelicious cheesecake made with Snickers. <laughs> <laughs> or a lemon meringue cheesecake. Ooh, oh, lemon meringue. Or truly sorg. Great. What did you learn before I. Uh, uh, I was going to go to the chat room for what we learned. Uh, men- Tina Keys learned that it was indeed the final countdown and forget, and forget oh. the cheesecake. All about the Southwest egg rolls. Yes, Southwest yes, Tina. Egg? What? Yes, Tina. Also, they had. I don't know if it's changed, but Cheesecake Factory had a really good vegetarian burger for a while. Like not just like a garden Ooh, burger or whatever. I think Missy just had that. Yeah. They had like they have one that had like beets in it and stuff. Really good. God, to, Cheesecake um, Factory. God, we're, we're, we're gonna house well, the rest of this pizza after days. the show. Now I'm getting so hungry. I know. Now I have I to eat pizza like, just yeah, to like scratch no, the like, itch. Yeah, seriously. Um, also, uh, by the way, so, also nothing is forever. Uh, South uh, is sorry. Zack Saber Jr. is the new J- New Japan Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. Beat Naito uh, over the weekend, and uh, Tana Ta- Tanahashi is retiring Tanahashi. in 2026. Yes. So enjoy the ace while you can. Frozen piece of ch- cheesecake dipped in chocolate. What the? Oh what? my gosh! Oh so, yeah, that's what. Yeah. At Grove City Outlet Mall, <laughs> the longest time you could go to the Rocky Mountain Candy Company and mm-hmm. get a chocolate dipped frozen piece of cheesecake on a stick. Oh my gosh. Oof. And it ruled. It did. 
it was awful to eat because it was so hard to eat. But like, man, once you cracked into it, uh, best thing ever. Uh, from the chat room, Toddy was asking, uh, what was, I got it, that's the weird out thing. Uh, what was your your favorite match from Enjoy? I didn't, can't remember if we said. Mine? Uh, mine? Yes. Oh, uh, Kings of the District versus T. That's what I thought. Yeah. I, he mm-hmm. might not have been on one. Ma- match, of, yeah. match of the night. Awesome. Dave Ponder learned that reporters can't handle women's wrestling. I don't know. Mm-hmm. This. Is this a reaction to PWI, maybe? Take Is it because you. it was 250 and <laughs> not Made some context. Made some context for this. Yeah, it, it, Dave, what's Probably, the, yes. what's the skinny here? Yeah, man? what's 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 the lowdown on this one? I need some background on that one. So, what did I learn from wrestling this week? I learned. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm looking at the entire menu and I'm hungry. <laughs> I learned cheesecake, cheesecake over wrestling. Apparently, like, so so like next episode, we just like from location the Cheesecake Factory. Listen, like next next week, Joe, Joe Dombrowski's on. He's just gonna give me. He's just gonna start reading the KFC menu. Uh, so I Not think that's just gonna tantalizing. be. No, 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 no. Maybe I can get him to talk about cheesecake. Who knows? Um, so I God, what did I learn from wrestling this week? Did you learn that suffocating I, people with plastic bags is now a thing? A thing, a thing. Apparently, I I was um. I, you know what? I thought we were gonna get a "This Is Murder" chant. Um, but it was so like. It, like Tina was in the audience talking about it, it was it was def- it deflated the entire audience, which is actually a funny term considering. Um, but um, you know, sword. That's you, twice. Yeah, you That's can't. Twice. You can't stop That's yourself. That's two times no, now. No, sword. It's it's late. It's late. Um. So, uh, no questions for Mariah. Oh God, they didn't. Ha- Nobody had questions for Mariah May at the press conference. What the fuck? Not a single question. Not a single question out of that press corps. Are you kidding me? how oh that's what you meant to oh man oh yeah okay sorry dave i didn't mean it yeah yeah no I forgot anything. about that sorry, dave. um yeah no that so i uh, some interesting change-ups because now they also have nigel and tony uh shivani presiding over that i think because everybody kept t- asking tony questions <laughs> killing con questions so. yeah it was a really good idea to have like people who are more trained in these things to handle these things and not the people that you're going to poke with pressing gotcha. questions about yeah. the business of yes. aew and it's very pokeable because yes. he takes the bait every single time absolutely yep. that like little cooked out weasel just can't help himself <laughs> now we talked about last week no. triple h didn't do they, well with some yeah, responses that, after bad blood they, they're like, both not good they, at talking yeah. they shouldn't do it. <laughs> no, yeah, they yeah. shouldn't. <laughs> like, like it's okay. You don't have to have all the strengths. You have money and power. Mm. Maybe you don't need to also have a like spotlight during these moments because you're so, bad at it, though. And it's interesting. Well, it, so, so Tony's like the the Vince, the the buck stops here with this guy kind of thing, putting himself out there, which is great for access and stuff. But you know, obviously that went to a certain place. Uh, Triple H is uh, what chief content officer so he's about the content the creative the wrestlers and now he is getting in the spot where they are poking him about some of the business aspects to yes he's involved but he's not that guy he's not you know Mm. so he's okay but he's getting put in these spots because they see him as the new vince yeah but it's not true like nick khan is the new vince in a certain or they've said listen vince Vin, if you do a reverse Dragon Ball Z, where you've separated Vince and it became Triple H and Nick Nick Khan, a reverse uh, oh, what's the thing well, with the dance? A reverse, what, what's, fusion? A reverse fusion dance happened. This is hypothetically. This is okay, I'm, I'm listening. I'm this listening. is one of the nerdiest conversations I've ever no, been to. I, I, I times get, I've seen I a fusion this. dance in pro wrestling, or or literally Joe Murphy had Goku socks when he sat in that spot a few weeks ago. Okay, so this is like completely Joe, on. Joe brand. Murphy has the has the Vegeta jacket. He does have the, the Vegeta badass jacket. Vegeta jacket. <laughs> Tony Khan was in prison for the media scrum. Yes. Um. So yeah. Anyways. Um. That is so bizarre. Not a single question from Mariah May. Not mm. any kind of like soft like. Have you been seeing what Tony's been doing in stardom? You know, like it's like not even a fucking fluff question, right? Not, yeah. Yeah, like not even a story it's question. Like, who do you think you're fighting next? Yeah. So, okay. What was her appearance at the press conference like then? Awkward. Just like. It would like showed up. They sat there going once, going twice. 
And then she's like, I'm really disappointed in all you and left or something. <laughs> like, that was it. And I haven't seen any other clips from it. I, you know, but uh, yeah, that was it. Bis- I would be disappointed. That's too. a shame. Bizarre. Yeah. That was weird. That was How? really weird. How? Um, I'm struggling to figure out what I learned from wrestling this week. Let me be quite honest. I had a very, I had a very stressful weekend. So, um, I learned that I enjoy wrestling. I no, no actually, no. It was. Hey, you, you know, said the thing. I um, yeah. I've been using it a lot in social media. If you haven't noticed, um, no, I, I, I yeah. So we did do um, maybe I'll talk more on Patreon about this. So I just do real quick because we're actually at mostly what I wanted to check out for this time. Um. But uh, no, I, I, yeah, we did sponsor the uh, Indie Wrestling US did officially sponsor uh, some some match on uh, it's not some match the Dan has a match uh, on Enjoy Wrestling and uh, you know just the match that was on the, the center match. of the poster and I appreciate I did appreciate um, I learned that Enjoy runs a really good show over there um, you know I've had the opportunity to work with some pretty high profile companies uh, it was great to work work with Rich Bikini again. Bertini, I think I say it wrong all the time. <laughs> so I've known the guy for like four years. Um, and because uh, it's been a while, so it's probably been about a year since I've worked with him mm. at uh, Warrior Wrestling mm. and um, and catch up with them. And it, it just learn some things from people that, um, you know, that that in work in spaces that I don't get a chance to. Uh, and that's always good to see how other people kind of work and in, in, in format their stuff. Much like working in, di- working in different companies against r- work different wrestlers, like helps you grow as a wrestler. Um, working around different crews helps you grow as a creative professional as well. I, I, I can imagine that it's like it's it's getting to do the things that you know how to do, but in a different context to do them. Yeah, they're in different worlds, you know. Like like Scotty does some really high level stuff. It's commercial stuff, TV stuff, some of the people on his crew does. And then like, you know, we have me and you know, like Rob that do what we do on the indies. You know what I mean? Like we come from different vectors. Mm-hmm. You know, and you mean the mail is like, oh hey, you should do this. Hey, you should do this. You know, I kind of talked about it a lot on Awesome Cast actually earlier tonight. Because there's a lot of technical behind it. But um, you know, but you know, Scotty's got the skill for the look. You know, I know how to pull a show together. Mm-hmm. He knows how to make it look a very specific way, you know, and it's just like, you know, that's, that was awesome. You know, sw- live switching something like that, like you feel, I feel like I was, it feels like I'm switching AEW. It looks so cool, you know, and that, that's, that was really cool to kind of be a part of something like that. And then I haven't been a part of something like that since, well, Ashe, we were doing really good stuff with and, yeah. uh, and I had a chance with Defy a couple of times. And that's when when the stuff coming across my screen that as a director, if you have if you're working on certain shows with certain levels, like maybe they're just newer videographers or something like that, and you're just like, God, I got to look for something to make this work versus you're giving me just options and I get to paint the picture with what the videographers are bringing in. Right. And it looks good and everything's framed. And I literally have a choice to just follow the action and figure out what's going to work. Um, that is a really, really cool place to be. Um, you know, once all the technical details are <laughs> solved and everything like that. So, which sometimes you got to do in the middle of the show. <laughs> so, which is always something that's, that's live. That's well, we're allowed to tape. Thankfully we're on pay-per-view, but you know, but, um, but yeah, no, it was very, very cool to work with that crew and, and work with, I love much like working with the enjoy crew and the wrestlers that are there are like working with Exodus where I'm like, Oh God, everybody finds a camera. Everybody knows where to be. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not like, you're not just like, why is this person just has a back to all three cameras, you know? And just like, you know, at some show, you know, like everybody knows what this is, knows this is a big deal, knows this is, you know, TV quote unquote, you know, as far as presentation mm-hmm. and they're there for it. You know, I don't know what they do backstage in the meeting to prep everybody for it. Or they just, they've been here enough times or there are people that come you know, sunny kiss, you know, obviously has been there and knows how to work this, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so yeah, that's always, um, there's some intangible things I think I learned this weekend. <laughs> I, I meant to just shout him out before, but, um, we had a new announcer for Enjoy for this show. Yes, for the first yeah. time ever. from Indianapolis, I think. Yeah, for, uh, Jay Rose, who I'm familiar with from his work on a couple of different, like notable ones. Okay, he Naptown Pro out where he's at, and as um, maybe he's done Black Label and maybe some GCW shows, especially during uh, Media Weekend when a lot of like you know 
a lot of that stuff gets mixed up. Mm -hmm. But I always really like his style. He has a really, really like infectious energy when he mm -hmm. comes in there. A huge, big, big personality. Um, really fun to have like a brand new announcer in that way. Mm -hmm. And um, I have loved the work of the other people that have done that have been in that role. But it was just fun to see someone new and uh, someone recognizable. I'm always concerned. Wrong button. Yeah, there we go. I'm always concerned when I get like a. Um, I will consider him a, uh, a non typical announcer, right? Mm -hmm. Not the guy that stands in the middle of the ring and does Gary Michael Capetta next matches da 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 like a Sean Collier kind of thing. I consider in that line. Mm -hmm. I always get worried because sometimes they're just everywhere and, yeah. and you don't know what's going on, right? Um, he had the right energy. Yeah, is the best way I can put it to keep the show going wasn't going off on this that you know, you know it, it like like i've had guys that walk around the ring and just like you're literally running around the ring doing this announcement i don't know what to do with you you know and he just had that right mix of not just the dude standing there he was like hype man slash announcer in the best way possible and i loved it That's you awesome. know like i really dug that and I actually <laughs> i got to see a little bit of a clip of how they start like of some of the final cut of how like, like i think that first like are you ready for wrestling moment? And I'm just like, okay, that's that's the vibe right there, right? So, mm -hmm. and uh, even the pre announcements, I'm like, I should I capture this? This is actually pretty good, you know. Usually, it's just kind of flat. <laughs> so, like, like he got he got people popping for the sponsors. Like, this is good, yeah. you know. They got, like, like, they got the all the shows. crowd. They got the whole crowd for the the rock paper scissors tournament that's during right. the intermission. That's right. And I think we shot that. I think Scotty went yeah. over and shot that too. Because I'm like, should I be doing something? God, my buttons. Right, Sorry, keep, I swapped my buttons just, tonight. Just like just weird keep, house. For yeah, reason, just keep sorry. blowing that weird, weird house screen up. Um, no, absolutely. And I, I, it was a lot of fun. And he was he was a really good choice um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, there. Uh, and something different. And I like that. It was yeah. a different space. with your different vibe. You're, That's yeah. fine. If you're going to experiment, you might as well really experiment and sure. like, throw in some new factors. See what see what works. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. Um, and... Not all of them are uh, partners are on the network, but uh, the other cool thing about Pittsburgh this week is between this past weekend and literally Thursday, Friday, Saturday this week, um, there are four wrestling shows within city limits. And not just within city limits. I'm talking like central yes. city of Pittsburgh, south side, mm -hmm. north side, and the Strip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so what's happening? So, well, I know 880, the, the 880 night, Saturday. Yeah. And the Thursday night show is on and that's, Thursday, but they have the Friday show on Wait, no one's Wrestle Rex is Friday, Wrestle Rex is Friday. and then something's yeah. happening on the south side that one won't get into on the show. But uh, but but still, you have options. You yeah. know, it is, trust me, it's not hard to find them. Yeah, uh, so yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, in you know, again, go check out Wrestle Rex. We have a lot of friends of the show that are involved in that. Uh, we filmed the first Wrestle Rex, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, and they're at a new location. They're at City yep. Winery. Yeah, they're at a winery. So. Man, if you want to get your booze on and watch wrestling in the city of Pittsburgh, Check your there, you've had four options in one week in this city. Don't tell me yeah. wrestling is dead. Get yourself some craft brews and enjoy. Get yourself some like fine wine and wrestling. And like, I what I really said at City Winery is also one of those things where I'm like, <laughs> where are we? What's going? What on? is <laughs> happening right now? So unfortunately, I, I really wanted to see what the vibe was like because I love the Wrestle Rex concept at yeah. the old Rex Theater mm -hmm. Enclave, I guess it is now or whatever. Uh, unfortunately, I am going to be out of town, so I will be uh, in Detroit area in Taylor, Michigan. Hold on, I'm actually just learning a little bit of the details of the show. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to be there. I know I'm booked, and uh, I'm going to be asking a lot of production questions tomorrow for setup. Uh, but uh, the, I, if you're in there in in the oh god, I just saw who's on. Wait, um, what's, well, what's the show called? The Sork? show <laughs> is called Simply the Best with um, Clash Wrestling and Ricky Shane Page uh, involved oh. in putting this show together. Uh, uh, my favorite is the Coger brothers are there. Oh, no. We'll see. I'm be on behind <laughs> production, so don't worry. I will not get Atticus blood in my mouth this time. Um, uh, but Cruel is going to be there, and we know my history with Cruel yeah, in I, the I, Detroit I, area around hard cams. So I saw Cruel's face there, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh no, mm -hmm. Sorg. Homicide, the wrestler will be there. Uh, Crash Jackson will be there. He'll probably be at your show the next night. Probably in probably yeah. um, uh, Chris will be there. Um, 
can't remember which is the good one. I think it's Jake, right? <laughs> it's on this. Um, but, uh, Jessica Havoc is on this. And uh, PME, who we just saw at Enjoy, is going to be on this. A uh, really good lineup um, a- as well. So, Yeah, excited to see it. PME on the uh, Enjoy show this past weekend. And I mm-hmm. hope that they bring them back because they they were great. Yep, always a good, always really a good yeah, crew always, there. Always, always fun to see them. So that is going to be on IWTV, and of course we do have, like I said, RWA and 880 will be Saturday night, all on IndiaWrestling.network and uh, streaming platforms with uh, YouTube, uh, obviously, um, and then Thursday night fights. So that's my travel schedule for this week, and then Sunday I'm going to sleep. Just sleep. Are you going to? Are you? No, I'm probably not going to sleep. I was going to say, I'll, probably be, I'll sleep. probably be fixing the shows from the night, uh, finalizing the shows from the night before or something. So. Emily Fear is at the Grit and Glitter podcast. That is correct. Yep. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, we have a Patreon if you mm-hmm. want. Um, Harley does a fantastic show every month with his new co host for this, uh, Meg James. For our Patreon subscribers, we do a uh, history of women in the WWE, tracing from the very back, from the very, very beginning. Um, it is exhaustively researched, lovingly, lovingly, exhaustingly researched by Harley. And it's, um, yeah, they are somewhere in the early 90s right now. Okay. Still. I'm not exactly sure where they're at. I forget where they left off. But um, it's an interesting time for women's wrestling or lack thereof in the WWE. But there's um, definitely still people. There's there's people that you, that there's stuff to look forward to. It was. I was always, uh, even as a a younger wrestling fan, I had a tape called WWE's Most Unusual Matches, and they put a women's tag team match on that tape, and I'm like, what? Was it just like a tag match? It too? was just jumping bomb angels against whoever the other women's tag Glamour team Girls. was. It was, was it Girls. Glamour Girls? Probably? Yeah. It was always Glamour well, Girls. I have to look that up. Yeah, which it, those matches, the few that the few that there are, but the those matches are incredible. We actually have mm-hmm. we we've done a whole we did a whole episode specifically about the jumping bomb angels in WWE um, during that time and it's a fascinating story actually but like yeah those matches are well worth people's attention and they do not people do not know enough about it but yeah so this uh, that's on our Patreon that special uh, women's wrestling entertainment history um, also we just have the weekly pod every Tuesday grit and glitter we did the TNA draft this week so if you want this is very important actually. Go on our Twitter and vote for my draft picks because I am, I've won every draft aside from the first one. So I want to win again. Vote for mine. Mm. You don't have to even like mine. Just vote for me or else. I didn't wave at you. You didn't wave so, at me. No. So you better vote for me. So I might, I might not. Riz is, Riz plays games. I am at Risk Plays stuff. Games. I am also going to be back. Hopefully, knock on wood, nothing else happens uh, on D and Denial this Thursday. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're doing a little bit of a, a role playing game called Pearl of Hope. Come see us. There you go. It's fun. Where, where can people find that? Uh, on twitch.tv slash D and Denial. D, the letter D, the letter N, Denial. D and D, and Denial. Denial. Yes. Yes. Got it. Um, and I will be. I will be at uh, RWA uh, this Saturday. Still, we we still need to have, figure out where Matt is. Uh, yeah. 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 He may cameo on the still, show. He's still running somewhere. Thank you, everybody. This has been your Wrestling Mayhem Show. Please follow us, everybody. Please follow us on uh, Patreon if you do enjoy what we're doing here so we can keep grow help help us grow the show if you are so inclined. Thank you, everybody. Stay tuned for Patreon, and we'll see you guys next week. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.